First, I'm going to kick us off um, with a deep philosophical question. If a data science analysis happens in the woods and no one is around to hear it, does it make an impact? Exactly. The answer, no. Uh, so if we want to use data to make decisions, answer scientific questions, inform people on issues, do journalism, basically anything else with data, just the data analysis itself is not enough, um, which is actually somewhat disappointing. Um, and I say this as being disappointing uh, for past me, who decided that science was like the way to go because I would never have to write or talk about anything. Um, so that's gone really well for me. Um, but when I first really learned that is, um, so I started do, writing open source software in bioinformatics. Um, and I was working with genomic data. Um, and we discovered um, some problems with 454 sequencing data. And I wrote some Python scripts within the lab to clean up the data. And we're like writing up the paper. And my advisor says, well, like, how can anybody else do this? Like, you have this script that you like put on a USB disk and you know give to somebody else in the lab. Um, is there a way that we could make it that like other people would have the ability to like clean up this data? And so this was my first experience, um, really like moving beyond a script. And I wrote this website, um, and the paper came out, and it had you know a reasonable number of views, but the site had millions of hits. Um, and so it was really interesting to me to see how this kind of differential impact when you added that extra layer of communication and access um, to something that you were working on. Um, and so this last step, this stage of publishing, of communication, is in fact something that all of us need to do. Um, and I'm guessing that maybe there are some things that are like going well for you, um, and maybe some things that, that could be a little bit better. So we're at a Thursday afternoon on day two or four or whatever of the conference. Um, so we're going to have a little chance to talk to each other. So you're going to turn to the person next to you, and you're going to talk about one thing that's going well for you for sharing and publishing your data science analysis and one thing that could be better. And you only have like a minute, so like don't tell the whole story. You have to be concise. All right, find the person next to you and answer these questions. Okay, clap once if you can hear me. Clap twice if you can hear me. Okay, um, I hope you had a great conversation with your neighbor and that you're best friends now. Um, please continue to talk through the rest of the conference. Um, so uh, now is the part where I try and guess uh, what it is that you talked about. So um, I hope that one of the things that you said is going well is Jupyter Notebooks. Um, did we, uh, nice, I hear some cheering. How many people Jupyter Notebooks? Yeah, nice. All right. So, oh, that's the hard part. Okay, that's the next. I did. That's not on my hard side, so I, I didn't hear that. Um, so the Jupiter, it really did transform science, um, and because it really did give a way to combine data and code and make that available and accessible to people. So we just saw in the last talk about accessible Jupiter notebooks. You know, like thousands, millions of notebooks um, out there. So it really gave us a, a pathway 
um, to share data and code together um, and add that communication layer to what it is that we work with. Um, now here's where I guess maybe some things that are not going as well. Um, so some things that maybe are not going as well is that kind of that last mile, that publishing. So you have your great Jupyter notebook, now it's supposed to be a, an article. Now it's supposed to be a Word document for your collaborator. Now it needs to be a PDF, a website, um, a presentation. That part um, can be a little bit harder. And so Cordo was built as an open source scientific and technical publishing system that builds on standard Pandoc Markdown. Um, so you can use your regular notebooks. You can see here on the left is a Jupyter notebook. Um, and you can render these Jupyter notebooks into a variety of file formats. So this one here is HTML. So basically, I'm gonna go through a bunch of demos because I'm really excited about everything that Cordo can do, and so I did actually cut out some demos, um, but I'm basically just very enthusiastic about everything it can do. So I'm gonna show you um, some of the ways that these Jupyter notebooks can be rendered in different formats, some of the different features, how you put things together. Um, so here we have a Jupyter notebook, um, and Cordo is something that you run at the command line. So you can say Cordo preview, and it pops up um, this HTML rendering of your Cordo notebook. And you can see even um, that you can change it in real time. We change the um, edit something in the Jupyter notebook, and then it renders in the HTML. So the way this works is that when you render a Jupyter notebook with a Quarto, the contents of the notebook, the code, the markdown, and the outputs are converted into plain markdown and then processed by Pandoc, uh, which creates the finished format. So you can see here it says like PDF, HTML, Word. Um, so I'm going to show you uh, how you can render into multiple formats. So you can render into different formats at the command line, but you can use this YAML front matter to specify what formats you want things to render in. So the default is HTML here. But now we could render it to PDF. So here you have a PDF document of your Jupyter notebook uh, in one command, which makes me very happy. <laughs> thank you, thank you, yes. <laughs> um, yes, so you can have the PDF. Um, you also can do Word. Um, so we're gonna change the format up there to docx. So we rendered it to a document, and now we're going to open it. And we can see we have a Word document. Um, <laughs> sometimes you need Word documents. <laughs> but no, there are actually, there are reasons. Every format is valid. Um, there are reasons, like uh, certain, certain industries require Word documents for compliance, like that there, there are pathways that they use something in particular. No one's dead to me. All formats are welcome here. Um, this is a, well, we just this is a slide, so you could uh, have the format be Reveal.js. So we just took a Jupyter notebook and turned it into a presentation. So you're literally changing nothing in the notebook. All you're doing is saying which file format you want it to render in. Um, so one of the, the talk uh, in the previous session was about accessible Jupyter notebooks, um, and she gave great advice um, for ways we can think about making Jupyter notebooks accessible. Um, but fundamentally, a lot of the different file formats are not very accessible. HTML is one of the more accessible formats. So that's something really nice, is that if you have these Jupyter notebooks, you can render to HTML. HTML uh, generally is a more accessible format um, than most of the others. So how does this work? Um, you can use any valid markdown syntax in these cells. That's probably something you're used to in Jupyter Notebooks. And then similarly uh, for code cells, right, same thing. Um, but what you have here is you have these um, 
these, fig these options here at the beginning, this prefix comma pound pipe. Uh, and so you can have things like label and your figure captions, fig alt for alt text. Um, so that's how you modify these different code blocks. So that was an example if you, you saw here where it says label fig polar. Um, so that's like an example of how you can do cross-referencing within these documents. Um, so right, a lot of times you have figures uh, in your documents and you want to reference them. You don't want to remember what number they are. Um, and so what you can do is you can give your figure or your table a label um, and then you can reference that label and then the linking will be automatic. So in this case, we've labeled this figure fig scatter. So now we use that at fig scatter sign. And then uh, when it renders over here in the HTML, you can see that it's automatically linked. I sped up the other videos and I did not speed up this one. So there you go, right? You can see, um, and it'll automatically increment them as well. Um, so that's a nice feature that you don't have to keep track of them. As long as you use unique labels, uh, you're using that in your document, you have, got, uh, you have automatic cross-referencing. Um, another really nice thing, um, and I think this really speaks to kind of something too that like a lot of people say, but like Fernando will say that the, the, the notebook is the, the advertisement for the notebooks. Like you often have like a lot of different nested notebooks. You have like your final one that brings these things together. Um, so within, um, within Cordo, you can embed um, something from one Jupyter notebook in, in another Jupyter notebook. So if, for instance, you have like an analysis you've done and you've generated a figure and you're going to want to be using that figure in multiple documents, you don't need to re like have that code in every file. Um, you can reference those other Jupyter notebooks and bring it into, into the one that you're working in. So you can see we had that explore penguin set IPY. Um, now we're going to embed a figure from that notebook um, into this notebook. There it is. Came on in. So again, um, you know, one of the things that, that we really see in this as well that I haven't emphasized so much yet, but is this idea of reproducibility, right? Um, I think one of the other things I didn't talk about that I really dislike about um, sharing information is that I would create figures and like they wouldn't look good and I would like put them in like Adobe Illustrator and like edit them and put them somewhere else and then that was terrible. Um, so here you really can see how reproducibility is built in already, right, it's your code, your figures, everything right there. But the embedding idea um, also lets you really make sure that you're like referencing the original figures, original code in any notebook um, that you're using. Um, I do have to, I did have to do citations because like there's just such a pain point, right? Um, so citations is another thing uh, that is handled in Cordo. Is it going to work? Is it going? All right. Well, we can take a look. So um, you have like your references.bib here. And so you can reference. It's a lot like cross referencing, where you can add in a reference and it will automatically put it in. And if you mouse over it, you'll see the reference pop up and the reference will be included at the bottom of the document. Um, so, um, so that's another kind of kind of like cross ref that really makes, especially like authoring where you have references, really easy to use. Okay, so you're like, cool, cool. I can make HTML and PDF and like, what, now I have it on my computer? Like, that's like only kind of publishing and sharing. Um, so there's actually a lot of different ways then you can go from your local computer um, to publishing it. 
So Cordo Pub is a free service um, that Posit has. So you could say Cordo Publish Cordo Pub, and you can pick your name. So I'm like tracyteal.cordo.pub, um, and you can publish stuff there. And that's like basically click of a button. But also lots of the stuff obviously is in GitHub. Um, GitHub pages, uh, Netlify, Posit Connect, if you're working in an enterprise environment. Confluence, we were really surprised at how many people were excited about publishing to Confluence. Yes, see the nodding. That's just like, <laughs> um, so yeah, that came out in 1.3 and then like people, that was like the most, people were most excited about Confluence. Um, and now we do it and, and we like it too. Um, so yeah, so there's a lot of different avenues for publishing and all of them are still at that command line where you're saying like Cordo publish and then the way that you wanna publish. And there's great instructions like you can see here, all of these things have links on how to do that in the Cordo documentation. But my like most favorite quote about Cordo is actually from one of the Cordo developers who was a professor at University of Arizona before he came to work on the Cordo team. We're like sitting in a meeting and he literally says, he's like, scientists are gonna be able to spend time with their families and go outside and make friends because they're not spending so much time formatting their papers. And I'm like, how many papers do you write? Like, um, but, uh, but I think it really like speaks to like how much of a pain point this is um, and that it like that you, the opportunity you need to like focus on the content and not as much around like wrangling all of these things like is just really a joy. Um, so if you if you're like cool, I want to check it out. Um, what I went through a lot is kind of on this like tutorial for Hello Quarter with Jupiter, um, but you can see the sorts of VS Code extension. R works in our Studio IDE. Um, and then the, the get started is pretty short, and then the, the guide and the reference are very extensive, um, so there's a lot of information there. I would say if you're gonna like ask me at the end of the talk, like can Cordo do this, I will probably say yes and not know the answer necessarily to how. Um, but it could, because it can do so much. Um, but there's still still stuff like, we'd love to hear like what it can't do that you wish it could do. Um, but there's a yeah, really extensive documentation. Okay, oh wait, if this doesn't work, I'll be so sad. Oh no. I'm gonna have to just like go get that video. Okay, I'm gonna do that at the end if we have time. This is so, okay, so coming soon in manuscripts is, um, it like brings it all together. I'll come back to it, okay. Someone asked me a question about it. Be like, hey, what are you doing with manuscripts? And then I can go and do it, okay. So I talked about Cordo being the last mile. I have a line of time. And, um, but it also can be the first mile. So that, that idea of publishing, you have your notebooks, that's great. Um, but once I started using it kind of for the publishing piece, then I really found it being like a real workhorse for a lot of the other things that I had to do around content creation. So websites and blogs, articles, I talked about presentations, this is a quarter of presentation. Don't take any design tips from me, that is not something I've developed. Um, books, um, all kinds of like knowledge repositories, um, so one example is like with VS Code, with the VS Code extension in Cordo, um, you can come in and you can say you want to create a Cordo project, um, and then you get this template, and then uh, essentially that's a website. You put some stuff in there, you hit publish, and you have a website. Um, and it, so it has built-in things for like websites and blogs. Um, so a lot of the kind of like online content um, that you need to create. Um, books, similarly, like we've just published um, like R for Data Science, uh, all in Cordo, but I think someone has written a book like in Jupyter and then put it in Cordo and then made it a book. So there's actually a, a default Cordo book format that gives you like the table of contents and the index and it's just like out of the box, you can, you can build a book. Oh my gosh, what is happening? Okay, so another thing that you can do is that you can make, um, you can make interactive documents. So this is um, a Cordo document and it has a Shiny app in the Cordo document. So Shiny app is interactive um, for building interactive web apps. Um, 
And so uh, if you want to combine those interactive elements uh, with your static document, you can combine um, Cordo and Shiny. And so Shiny was, has been an R for about 10 years, um, but we now have a Python version of Shiny, so kind of learned everything um, from the R Shiny experience uh, working in, and working in Python now. So this one here um, is one that is on a server, but there's also a version uh, called Shiny Live um, that uses PyDide and can run in the browser. Um, so it's kind of neat to you, that you can combine them um, in this instance if, if you want like both the interactivity um, and the static document. Okay, now I'm gonna go find my manuscripts one. So here's manuscripts. So it kind of brings it all together. So you have your manuscript here, right? Code, equations, figures, um, and you can link to your data sources. And you can link to, is that the end of it? But you can link to your article notebook and you can see here that all, like, all of the formats are here right away. So this is the HTML version, um, but then you have the PDF and the Word version like all on one landing page. So this is gonna be a part of Cordo 1.4, which is probably coming out around the fall. Um, but it just really speaks to the team's like, interest in really making like, the article and the manuscript experience really good um, and sort of appreciating what, what people need to do and what they wanna bring together. Um, and really like kind of respecting the analysis and the code um, that's, that's behind the communication. So even though the data analysis is not enough, um, this Corda does a really good job of exposing both um, the code and the, and the analysis uh, along with the communication about it, which is really important like if you're on like a reproducibility open science, um, like I don't know, kick? Is it a kick? I don't know. It's a, is it a kick? Is it a kick? Yeah, if you're on that kick, like, then this is like, it totally uh, aligns with all of those practices. And so it's just that ethos, like, this is open source, open science, this is kind of trying to support that all together. Okay, so really uh, what I wanted to talk about is making publishing fun again. No, never been fun for me. For me, for the first time. Um, and so these are places that you can learn more. Uh, Corda.org, really great documentation. If you want to learn a little bit about Shiny, shiny.posit.co. Um, and we're here um, at uh, the conference. Uh, we're here through tomorrow, so stop by and say hi. Got a couple Posit folks here. And Hadley Wickham, who works on R, is here too, um, learning a little bit about the Python community. So we've been having a great time so far, and we'd love to talk to more folks. Take any questions. Thank you. Um, I'm currently struggling with writing a report in Jupyter Notebook with collaborators who do not work in Python. Can it take comments in Word back into? <laughs> <laughs> Wow. This I did would say, be my I did dream. Say I was going to say the answer to almost everything was yes, but that it is not. Uh, the there, there. Yes. You see my pain. I, well, thank you for everything that it can do. It's really great. Yes. I'm sorry. But hopefully the word conversion can, can help a little bit. But yeah. You think with Panda? Maybe. Yeah. This is a, we should put it in, in an issue. Sounds like a sprint. Sounds like a sprint. There we go. We should. I'm pretty sure you. You think? I, I think so. It'll take a little work from the Posit team, but I, I think I think they're up to it. All right. Put in an issue. Will you put in an issue? Yes. Okay. So the thing I didn't say. So Corda.org. If you go to the Corda. Actually, I'll go to the website. Um, if you go to the Corda.org website, it, at the top it says help. And it says, like, ask a question. I think it sends you then to our discussion forum. So you could say, new discussion. So you're not like being like, this is wrong, please fix it. Like, you're not being mean. You're just like, hey, it'd be cool if it could do this thing. Um, and then, yeah, we'll know sort of like how far or how 
close that kind of that kind of thing is. So, and the thing is, like, if you think it's something you want to do, other people do too. So it's like great if you're surfacing things. And the quarter team is like super responsive and really loves to hear from people. So, thank you for the question. And I'm sorry my answer wasn't yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for the talk. Quart looks really good. I'm wondering about versioning. Does it allow you to publish a version and keep track when something updates and then you, you could say like, so now this is again ready for publishing in review. Is that something that you have built into Quarto as well? It's not built into Quarto, but if you have your like dot QMDs or well, Jupyter Notebooks are, right, it's hard to do the diffs on a Jupyter Notebook, but what you could do is that you can have the Jupyter to mark, Markdown, and then you will have the diffs on the Markdown, right? So you could do diffs on the Markdown. So if you have it in GitHub, and then you have the Markdown like rendering of the notebook, then you could do diffs on the Markdown, so that would, that would give you some versioning. There's probably even more ways to do that, but that, that's one idea, yeah. Um, yeah, so I was just curious if there was, since we're talking about versioning, is there some kind of plugin to get like a Zenodo DOI for final published document to automatically generate the DOI for your document? Mm, no, well, right, I mean, because Zenodo hands out the DOI, so you'd have to publish it to Zenodo. Um, so you basically are saying like publish, there should be like a publish to Zenodo button. Is that what you're thinking? I think it'd be fun. That's an interesting idea. Okay. <laughs> I, but I mean, very aligned, very aligned. Like, as you can see with the whole like um, manuscript and, and article. And I actually feel like maybe, Michael, do you or know if there's anything like that in the sets. works? Okay. Like presentations and data no. sets too. If we're doing automatic publishing, yeah. we always try to, we and, and others always get a Zenodo DOI on a presentation. Yeah. And um, even live coding demos mm -hmm. to try to promote those things as first class academic artifacts. Yeah, so yeah. having that a DOI that's automatically added to a something on, on a tag so you could cite it, other people could cite it, and get other people doing the same kind of thing. Yeah, that's an interesting idea. Okay. I, I, I think <laughs> I used to work at Dryad and so DOIs are like in my blood, but with date with data. Um, so <laughs> Yeah, that's a great idea. Uh, so a uh, great presentation and great product. I'm looking forward to trying it. Um, something, and maybe somebody in the room might correct me on this, but the markdown that we can do in a Jupyter Notebook, you can't make a markdown table inside of a markdown cell. At least that's my experience. Can you, is this version allow us to make a markdown table in a markdown cell? Does that make sense? Well, any Pandoc markdown, you can use any kind of Pandoc markdown, which you can That's, use okay. tables with, so. Okay, yes. so the Jupyter markdown doesn't allow you to make a table. Oh, yeah, Pandoc but if, markdown. But this is Pandoc so. markdown yes. in this? Mm -hmm. Okay, sweet, much yeah. better. So that's like, if you look back at the, whatever the code blocks were. Anyway, yeah, it's, it's Pandoc markdown. Hi, Tracy, great talk. Um, if I wanted to write some, like a, a how-to guide and publish it on like a docs website, mm -hmm. um, so I want to have some code examples, I don't want to be copy and pasting stuff, but I'd love it, like for it to be diffable. If I like write this in a QMD with some like code examples, is there a thing that'll just render that for me that I can then throw up the static HTML like in GitHub pages? If you do, sorry, if you do what? If I have like this. Write it in QMD. Yeah, write a QMD. And okay. have it execute to get the output for that. Yeah, and then render to HTML. To HTML, well, uh, yes. Thank you. Yeah, well, I mean, and also like if it's in GitHub, you can use GitHub Actions and have it like through Netlify or GitHub Pages. If I don't know, I, I usually use GitHub Actions, but maybe you're thinking of something a little different. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, how much support is there for inter interactivity that is not uh, shiny? Is it, can you make a plugin to make other things that are interactive show up there? Um, yeah, so there's um, there's observable um, is the other kind of big um, let's see here we go guide interactivity. Let me make this a little bigger. 
Um, so observable or widgets. Um, so there's other. Thinking about Plotly, Bokeh. Plotly, yeah. Bokeh? I don't know about Bokeh. Thanks. It might, I, I, I just don't know the answer. That's a good question. I mean, like, we could Google it. This is, this is how I figure things out a lot of times. Even though I, like, sit with the Quarto team, it does too much. Not too much. Never too much. <laughs> Thank you for the talk. Um, I've used JupyterBook quite a bit, and this sounds very similar to JupyterBook. So I was wondering, I, I, I'm not sure it's a fair question or not, but uh, is there, you know, can you tell me maybe what the differences are between the two projects? Yeah, sure. So JupyterBook is awesome. Um, so JupyterBook does focus on books. Right, uh, it's in the name there. Um, so the, the Cordo ecosystem is meant to focus on a very broad set of like different publishing capabilities and like these different file formats uh, and uh, like presentations and things like that. So if you're already like happily using JupyterBook, keep happily using JupyterBook. Um, this like might give you something a little bit different, but you know, not necessarily too much. Um, if you're kind of thinking about like other formats or I mean, I guess Jupyter Book can do multilingual because Jupyter can do multilingual. Um, so yeah, if you're happy with Jupyter Book, keep using it. It's great for books. Um, Cordo just kind of expands the set of things that are possible in publishing beyond books. And it uses different technology, but that's probably not really the most important part. All right, one, one final question. Do you support Microsoft OneNote? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that was half Man, serious. Like really I was or, I'm like, I'm sort of say serious. Yes to everything, and then I'm like, no, no. But I'm I'm writing these down, and then I'll, I'll come back. And I'm not sure where to land on the priority queue, but uh, <laughs> you know, these are great questions. I love it. Yeah. Great. Th thanks everybody for your questions. Please. Uh, yeah, and please come bring more to us at the booth. We want them all. <laughs>